This video talks about the wilson lowy matrix, which is important for understanding interest group politics, which in turn helps explain a lot about how politics affects policy outcomes. Let's get into it. The key is knowing whether the cost and benefits of a given policy are concentrated or dispersed. The reason we care about whether benefits and costs of a policy are concentrated or dispersed is that this affects whether you are likely to get an interest group that mobilizes. If the policy effect is concentrated, then a group is likely to mobilize to advocate for itself. And if the policy effect is dispersed, we are unlikely to see a group mobilize on the issue because it isn't worth it for the individuals being affected. When the benefits and costs are both concentrated, we have interest group politics because both sides will mobilize to advocate for their interests. Basically, the interest groups will fight it out. Labor laws, at least in some cases, could be an example of this with business and unions opposing each other. Next, when the benefits are concentrated but the costs are dispersed, we have client politics. In this situation, we should see the group benefiting mobilizing to lobby the legislature but not the other side. Because the group that is mobilizing is likely to be unopposed, the legislature is likely to do what they want, which is why we call it client politics. It is as if the legislature is treating the benefiting group as their client. We can think of ag subsidies as an example of this dynamic. We all pay a bit more for food because of ag subsidies, but the amount we pay is small enough that it isn't worth mobilizing over. However, the ag industry benefits from those subsidies and so mobilizes and gets those benefits. Now let's talk about the case where both the benefits and the costs are dispersed. Here we have majoritarian politics. In this case, we should be unlikely to see groups mobilize much and instead it should really be about what the majority wants. An example of this might be community parks. The public both pays for these parks and enjoys them and so politicians should likely focus on what voters want if there are no interest groups involved. Last, we have the case where the benefits are dispersed and the costs are concentrated. We call this entrepreneurial politics because it is the case where to get things done, an entrepreneur needs to oppose the organized interest. One example of this could be free trade because the majority of people benefit from lower prices when free trade increases. However, that benefit is relatively small. And at the same time, free trade comes with costs, and those costs are concentrated in certain industries. Accordingly, those industries have incentives to mobilize and oppose increasing free trade. Another example might be regulating air pollution from specific factories or industries. Doing so would lead to concentrated costs at those specific factories, but would have a dispersed benefits for everyone in the form of better air quality. Again, this would be an uphill battle and would require some entrepreneurial politics. That's it for today's video. Remember to keep asking questions, to keep studying, and to keep safe.